How are US tax dollars being spent on Israel? Another strike on that terror. Through a lot of military funding. Since Israel's creation in 1948, the United States has provided $236 billion in aid and missile defense funding. Human rights groups say the Israeli army has been using US-made military equipment to attack Gaza. In May 2021, Israeli air raids killed 200 people in Gaza during the first week of violence. Dozens were children. It's why people are increasingly asking, why does the US continue to be complicit in Israel's violation of human rights? Occupation no more! Each year, the US gives Israel $3.8 billion in military aid. That's $38 billion total signed in a 10-year agreement between Israel and the US. To put this military assistance in perspective, Annually, it's a billion dollars more aid than the US spent in the fight against the climate crisis. When you do the numbers, it means the average individual US taxpayer gives $26 in military assistance to Israel each year. It's the cost of paying 47,000 elementary school teachers in the US. This hefty US military assistance ensures Israel's military is one of the most technologically sophisticated in the world. You're looking at the most advanced fighter jet ever made. Israel used U.S. grants to purchase the lion's share of its F-35 Joint Strike fighters. And this is Iron Dome, Israel's missile defense system. Israeli officials say around 90% of Hamas rockets were intercepted by Iron Dome during a week of fighting in mid-May 2021. Between 2011 and 2020, the U.S. invested $1.6 billion into Iron Dome batteries, interceptors, co-production costs and general maintenance. On top of the military funds the US already provides, in May 2021, the Biden administration approved an additional $735 million weapon sale to Israel. This came as Israeli attacks on Gaza intensified. Because my friends, day after day, year after year, decade after decade, non-violent Palestinian activists struggle against the daily violence and harassment of occupation violence and harassment subsidized, by the way, with billions of U.S. taxpayer dollars. U.S. military assistance to Israel also includes joint military exercises, research and weapons development. Now, Israel ranks as one of the top arms exporters in the world. The state has exported missile defense systems, drones and cybersecurity products to countries including India, Brazil, the U.S. and Russia, but it's not just arms that the U.S. gives to Israel. American governments have historically been staunch allies of the Israeli counterparts on the international stage. This includes blocking resolutions that challenge Israel's violations, like building illegal settlements, and blocking attempts to hold Israel accountable for war crimes in Gaza. There has not been a significant overreaction. In the span of one week, Washington vetoed UN Security Council calls for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, not once, not twice, but three times. President Biden only added to calls for a ceasefire after eight days of violence. In fact, the US opposes the International Criminal Court's investigation into alleged war crimes in the occupied territories. Now, US interests in the Middle East might be waning, but Israel's security is still a cornerstone of U.S. foreign policy. Here's what U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken had to say. As uh, we've said before, Israel has the right to defend itself. There is no equivalence between a terrorist group indiscriminately firing rockets at civilians and a country defending its people from those attacks. Publicly, the U.S. focused on civilian deaths from Hamas rockets. There's no mention of Palestinians killed in Gaza or occupation. This is part of a bigger problem. For decades, the US has said it supports a peace process, but it's continued to block any efforts to stop Israel's systematic violations of international law. This has been happening simultaneously as Palestinians experience increasing dispossession and oppression. This is why Palestinians don't see the US as an honest broker in the conflict. In an effort to pressure Israel to follow international law, Palestinians and their allies have been calling for the boycott, divestment and sanctions of Israeli goods. But in the US, this form of resistance has been targeted. Many US states are using anti-boycott laws and executive orders to punish companies that refuse to do business with illegal Israeli settlements. 
Palestinians' rights to nonviolent resistance have been curtailed and even criminalized. Our party leaders have spoken forcefully against BDS, calling its proponents anti-Semitic, despite the same tactics being critically critical to ending the South African apartheid mere decades ago. So what happens now? Historically, there's been robust bipartisan support for Israel in Congress. From military sales to the fact the US was first to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel in 2017. But now, things might be changing. Domestic support for Israel is facing more scrutiny. And colleagues, Palestinians aren't going anywhere no matter how much money you send to Israel's apartheid government. For the first time, the US has a Palestinian-American woman in Congress in Representative Rashida Talib, and she has support. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and a group of progressive Democrats introduced a resolution aimed at blocking the recent $735 million arms sale to Israel, and the pressure against taxpayer funds toward Israel continues.